Hi everyone, I'm Jared Miller from MMA UK, and it's a pleasure to be joined today by Cage Warriors fighter Jamie Young and Richardson. Jamie, how are we, mate? Very good, thank you. Not too bad. Perfect. Well, first off, um, I saw on your socials you went on a bit of a um, lads trip to Oslo. It's somewhere I've always wanted to go. So how was that? Yeah, it was really good. It was a uh, it was just a day trip, so we went at like four in the morning and come back at like eight, but um. It was a secret Santa gift, so oh, wow. that was quite funny. Nice. And uh, well, the main reason we're going to talk today is to look forward to your upcoming fight next month at Cage Warriors 150 against Justin Bellinson. Um, how's preparations in general going for that fight? Uh, really well. Um, keeping busy, um, feeling fit. So, yeah, I'm ready. Good. It's good to hear. And for those that don't know, um, you train at Force Submission, which has a number of um, really talented coaches there. Um, what's training like on a day-to-day -day basis? And for somebody like yourself leading up to a fight, what's the atmosphere like around the gym? Uh, it's a good buzz. Everyone's really supportive. Everyone um, is out to help me um, in preparation, definitely. Um Day to day basis, I just, I just work and train, man. So as soon as I get back from work, I do you know two, two and a half hours in the evening. Sometimes coming before before work as well. Uh, so it's tiring, but it's got to be done. Just out of interest, I've never read before. Um, what do you do as a day job? Um, a cabinet maker. Oh, okay, very interesting. So is it yeah. um is that easy to fit training around, or is it sometimes I've heard of the stories. Uh, is it sometimes a bit difficult but uh no my boss is very understanding what i do so it's it's very easy which is good it's perfect and um at force uh, you train alongside another fighter called oli sawa um he's a newcomer to the professional game um after a very successful amateur career in mind yeah um, what's he like around the gym and what's training with him like on a on a day-to-day -day basis because you know he's just joined the cage warriors uh, roster as well uh yeah he's good man he's he's you know what he's he's really good to train with as well because he's a, he's a lot smaller than me but i think like it helps with my reactions like sparring the, the smaller guys i definitely i think i definitely move quite quite fast for my weight but um yeah he's good he's a character man so i'm, I'm sure you'll you'll see that at some point when he starts yeah starts smashing people up well yeah. fingers crossed anyway and um I read that um, somewhere that you actually run or help run MMA and wrestling classes at the gym as well. Um, I was wondering, do you love to teach? Is that something else, um, you know, in the gym that you like to do? Uh, and if so, why? Sure, I never thought I'd be, I'd actually teach, but I don't, I don't mind it. I just like, yeah, I take the MMA and I help, I help out the wrestling classes when, um, when the wrestling coach can't, but um, he's there all the time anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But um. I don't mind doing the MMA classes. Uh, I like to see the guys evolve. Um, and I take things that, that work for me and, I, uh, and um, that I've learned and just I just pass it on to them and hopefully they, they do their best with all the information I give them. Uh, yeah, man, I, I, I like pushing them. They push me as well, which is good. Yeah, I was going to ask, is that... You know, does that help you in that sense as well? Because from a teaching point of view, maybe you can pick up skills yourself from the people you're teaching as well. Yeah, I feel like when when I teach, I feel like I have to I have to break it down into like steps and stages on some things. So it helps me understand what I'm doing as well. Like it helps. I think it helps me mm. um, break it breaking down the techniques and, and going through them rather than just doing it. You know. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. And um, looking back towards Berlinson, um, in just in general, how do you see him as an opponent? Uh, I think he's a tough dude. Um, I'm really looking looking forward to fighting him. Um, he obviously had that amazing brawl with Reese McKee last year. Yeah. I've watched that fight a few times because it's so it's so entertaining to watch. Yeah. Um, and I feel, I feel like me and him may possibly have the same sort of fight yeah. I, I really feel like we could be fighting a night like both of us he's been in some scraps I've been in some scraps I think we both you know 
definitely have that about us to to make it a great fight. Yeah, well, was, you know, you're obviously aware of his career, how good he is. He's fought in both Bellator, um, fought in Contender Series as well. Yeah, man. All of his wins have come via early finish. In fact, all of his professional fights, well, none of them have gone the distance. You obviously love to brawl. You love to stand and trade. Is there any chance you see this going the distance, or is that just not even a possibility in your eyes? Uh, I reckon it could, but I also think that it could be finished early, or it, we could. I don't know, man. Um, I feel like we're just gonna clash, if that makes sense. I think we're gonna we're gonna clash. Yeah, and um. You are coming into the bout off the back of a loss to uh, James Sheehan. Um, it was a decision loss. It was a very close fight, uh, bear in mind. Um, is there anything you've learned from that fight or is there anything you can learn from that fight that you can then take into next month's bout? Yeah, I, was, uh, I wasn't I was very active in that fight, if that made sense. Yeah. I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't, I wasn't very aggressive when I should have been. Um yeah, I feel like I just made a few mistakes, but you know, fair play to James Sheehan. He, he done what he needed to do to to win. So yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. And a lot of the time it's about building from. Although it's not the result you wanted, it's about building from that result. And um, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of fighters say the same thing as you just said. Um, and on another kind of subject, you you moved up to middleweight um, for around a year's time. Fought the likes of. Bonner, Frederick, uh, those kind of fighters. And then since moving back down, I was wondering, have you seen a, a change at all? Have you noticed a change in fighting back at welterweight or is it, is it just the same as it was before? Um, I feel like I'm a, li- a little bit more bigger, like mm. mus- muscular since, yeah. I've, since I've dropped. Not massively, but um, I definitely feel that. And I definitely feel my... My cardio is at a place where it's like in my last fight, I wasn't I wasn't tired. It was weird. Like I felt I could have gone another three rounds after the fight, which that's obviously me, you know. And I look back, I'm like, oh, why didn't I fucking push harder? Yeah, you know. But shoulda, coulda, woulda, I guess. But um, yeah, I feel I just I feel really good to be yeah. honest. Yeah, well, again, that's what we hear from a lot of fighters moving back down there. Then, after, especially considering you were at middleweight for quite quite a while, not just for one fight, I'm guessing that kind of changed it as well. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but in a few months' time, it would have been six years since your Cage Warriors debut. Um, so, massive congratulations there. Um, Thank you. Really well done. Um, is there a fight that pops into your head in particular as A, being a favourite, or, or B, being your best performance? A fight. Yeah. Um, I think my second Cage Rose fight against Hack and Foss is always my favourite um, because I felt I, I got bumped up to like co-main event with him is in the O2 yeah. um, I had like I sold so many tickets to all my friends uh, and I think it was just I just felt a bit overwhelmed like I've, I've only had one one fight in Cage Rose before and it just felt like I was, I don't know. It felt like I was such an underdog mm. that me winning, like how I did against a guy like Hakan Foss at that time, who was, you know, pretty good at the time, and I was only just coming in. It just felt amazing. That yeah. win just felt amazing. But, um, yeah, You'd say that, that that's probably my standout fight for me personally. Yeah. Yeah, because when I look back at your career, I think again about the, personally, about the performance against Bonner, the great elbow work in the first, knees to the body in the second. In terms of moments, I think of you escaping that Kimura um, submission um, against Botti a couple of years yeah. ago. Um, shrinking it down for you personally even more, is there a particular moment that stands out for you in your Cage Warriors uh, career? Yeah. Um, another one which was just a, a great feeling of relief was uh, my second fight against Phil Wells in Wales, where um, he, he was, you know, it was a back and forth fight, but he fucking dropped me in the second round, was beating me up in the third, just coming, coming at me, just beating me up. And I managed to just dig in and just get the finish. And that the feeling of 
at the end, and it was like a minute left of the, the last round. Yeah. And I was, he was probably going to win, but the feeling of just, it's like, if it, like going through that fight, I just felt like a bit like hell, if that makes sense. Yeah. It just, yeah. I just felt yeah. so beaten up. Yeah. But it was weird because I kind of enjoyed it at the same time. But once it, the, the, the feeling of relief when it was over was, yeah. and I've just, I, I just felt really good again. That was probably another moment. I'm, I'm sure that's the best kind of feeling for, for athletes. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, I mean, with your nickname in mind, Young Gun, um, you're still very young in the sport at 26 years old, although you have had... 27 now. 27, 27 now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, you're, right, you're right. Happy birthday since my research. Um, yeah, well. So with that in mind, um, you've had a lot of fights still at your at 27 years old. Um, and with so much of the future that you left to go, I know I might be jumping the gun a little bit here, but how long do you see this you know, amazing career you're having going on for? Um, well, this will be my 20th professional fight, yeah, uh, coming up now. And uh, I, you know, what? I'd really like to, I'd like to get 50. Hmm. I would, I'd little, li- I'd like to get 50. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to get a few more fights in there each year than, than what I'm doing now, but um, I would like to get 50 and maybe I don't know, maybe till I'm 35 or something like that, maybe. Yeah, but who knows, you know, you've got to, got to look after my body for that, yeah. Yeah, you got to cut down on the pints, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, as you say, we typically associate, you know, going into your forties with the heavyweights, the Glover Teixeiras, for example, off the top of my head, light heavyweights as well. Um, but can you see somebody like yourself going on until that kind of age, around the the forty mark? Uh, I'd like, I'd like, I'd like to think so. Yeah, I'd like to think I, I, you know, still want to fight, still enjoy fighting at that age. Because yeah. you know, you never know really when you get that sort of age. You might you might not enjoy it anymore. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think I still enjoy it because I still I'd love it as it is. Um, and I'd like to think I look after my body well enough to be able to to do it still, because it is it is hard on your body, um, especially all the training and it's intense, man. So yeah, do you yeah. Have, just out of interest, do you play any other sports or have you played any other sports? Uh, play a bit of golf. Yeah, golf. A lot, play lot, a bit of golf. More to, um, I'm not. Golf. I'm not amazing at it. I only play every now and again uh, right. when I have time. But yeah, it's just good little little escape. Yeah. So I was going to ask, how does competing in as somebody who's never competed in octagon myself, how does that competition in a in, a, in the end of the day in a physical fight level, how does that compare to playing other sports? Obviously, there's much more of a rush, but. Uh, it feels like there's so much less at stake. Yeah. It feels like, you know, if you make a bad shot in, let's say, golf yeah. or football, you know, it ain't, you ain't going to get knocked out for it. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're just going to go, oh, uh, oops. But, you know, I'll make one one wrong, move my head an inch this way, I could get, I could get kicked in the face or I could get knocked out, I could get fucking massive cut down or something, or something like that you know yeah so i think there's a lot more risk yeah, involved yeah and um i don't take too much of your time mate so i'll move on to my final question um what do you think the future for jamie richardson looks for and is there any goals anything in mind you've got set over the next year uh i want to be I want to make lots of money. <laughs> Fair enough. Lots of money. I, want to, I want to be in the UFC. I want to be in the UFC, and I want to be remembered for being a beast and fucking and just having crazy ass fights. That's that's what I want. Well, you're on your way to that, mate. Definitely. I mean, you uh, out of the cage warriors, Ross. You know, you're one of the fighters I do love watching all the time. So you're on your way to that. Don't appreciate worry. that. No Good. Worries. Appreciate that, man. Well, I, I'm all done here. So thank you very much for joining me again, Jamie. Um, best of luck uh, in a month's time. I'll be watching. So hope to see you win. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining me again. Thank you very much.